In this video, I show you how I turn this into this. Okay, so here it is now with the uh, the walls and the floors and the columns all um, all finished, distressed, and um, of course I I wound up wanting to do the outside once I got started with the inside, so uh, that that took a little while, but I think it'll be it'll be worth it in the long run. So, um, but but I did cheat a little bit on the outside. I've got three tiers of of squared off brick on the outside with just the, the capstones along the top of the wall just to save a little bit of time. So I found hand drawing the uh, the ones on the inside took a took a little bit of time. So there's the, the outside. And I used a uh, a broken a broken um, popsicle stick just to add some stress to some of the stones, make them look a little more rough cut and um, Took the tip of the of the box cutter and and chipped away at, at some areas, and then I'm not sure how easy you're going to be able to see the inside, but um, I'm pretty happy, especially considering this is my first go at styrofoam, at how it turned out. Just took a little bit of patience. Uh, the inside columns are are bricked up, large large bricks. Um, the granules in the styrofoam in, on the uh, the columns is a little bit larger than the rest of the of the piece, so it's a little more crumbly. Um, larger pieces, and in a couple instances, I intentionally um, made the column collapse on two different corners. And the far one over here, it's tough to tough to get it close to the camera, but the far one here. It's also got a broken corner, and next is uh, painting. Okay, so here we have the whole thing uh, base coated in black. I still have a little bit of uh, touching up to do on the exterior walls, just to fill in some uh, white areas that are still showing through. Um, but I wanted to just go through now and uh, start painting the um, the flooring, and. What I was doing, what I've been doing for a lot of my dungeon tile pieces is uh, laying on a, um, a fairly liberal uh, dry brush coat of this raw umber and then uh, a, a lighter coat of gray on top of it um, and treating the whole piece with that uh, color scheme and then going back over the walls only with a lighter color, either a white or this unbleached titanium. But I'd like to maybe show some sort of pattern in the flooring to represent that this fighting arena perhaps once had some uh, some grandeur to it or uh, was of higher quality, but that it's sort of fallen by the wayside or fallen into uh, a bit of state of disrepair. So what I thought I might do is um, do a 10 foot wide strip across the center and then up the middle in um, a raw sienna to, to show it like a, a different color from, from the raw umber. Um, I'm not sure if I'll mix that in with um, with the raw umber and make some sort of just lighter shade of the brown or not, but I thought I'd just try and do that. Um, so I'm going to apply a liberal coat of, the, of those two colors and, uh, and then see how it looks before I apply any other uh, gray or, or uh, unbleached titanium. So here's the arena uh, with the paint job uh, pretty well finished. Um, once I had it base coated in black, I follow that up with a fairly liberal uh, coat of um, the uh, raw umber. Um, I still wiped excess paint off off my brush with the paper towel um, as with a, a dry brushing technique, but there was still quite a bit of paint on the brush so that it did cover the surface of the of the individual tiles without getting down into the recesses and, and cracks. And because I wanted to have a pattern on the floor, I then took um, the raw sienna and painted the 10 foot wide corridor with a T-shaped uh, pattern on the floor. And then I um, 
I dry brushed on the remainder of the floor uh, with, with the standard gray. Um, the orange or the, um, the raw sienna was, was quite bright um, or brighter than I wanted it to because I wanted it to have a, a weathered look, um, a fatigued and run down look. So I then uh, went back over it with a very light um, dry brushing of, of the raw umber again and that worked really well. Um, it, um, it faded up the brown and or the, uh, the orange and, and gave it a nice worn uh, used used look and here's a let's see if I can get a bit of a close up here. The columns um, the columns look like styrofoam and there's really hasn't been much way much I've been able to do to to hide that fact. Um, I've broken down a couple to uh, to make them look like they've collapsed or, or the columns have broken away. But um basically they look like little balls of styrofoam. So um I tried to make them stand out, uh, make them look like they're made of marble, perhaps, columns. Um, I, I did etch in as best I could with a, a blunt tool um, to make them look like they're actually made of blocks. But um, I, I painted them with the, um, the unbleached titanium, which is the same color that I treated the walls with. And um, I guess that at least, at least they stand out a little bit and, um, and uh, catch the eye. So um, I did the outside wall as well with that. Um, sure, that's not very good lighting. Uh, let's see. Treated the wall on the outside the same way. Uh, the last little step was to go over the base of the wall with, um, with a little bit of brown to make it look like dirt had basically accumulated at the bottom of the wall. A bit of mud or, or dust had stuck to the bottom of the wall. Um, I'm not particularly, I'm, you know, I'm not thrilled with the way the walls uh, the dry brushing looked, and I think the paint is fairly obvious, and uh, just because of the size of the grain or the density of the styrofoam, it doesn't look as good as the floor does. Um, but it's okay, I guess. Not bad for a, a first time. You can definitely see the brickwork and then the stonework along the top. A little bit of distressing that I did. Okay, so here's the arena with uh, all the final touches. I've gone around and added flocking and a couple of uh, hardware details to, to make the arena look like a place uh, where some past battles have taken place. Um, over here when I was first curving out the wall, I, I cut a big scar down the length of the wall and I've since gone in and, and laid down some rubble flocking and um, a piece of chain with a with a, a loop or a hoop on the end, um, perhaps someone uh, an area where someone was chained up um, as part of a, a battle or some sort of spectacle, and that is basically just this um, low gauge chain that uh, you can get at uh, practically any hardware store, and the loop uh, is made from this uh, bag of little uh, children's gold rings that you can buy. At, um, at the dollar store. So I just painted those up and um, an anchored them to the wall by making a bit of a staple out of another ring. And then I uh, applied some blood splatter. You can see bits of, bits of blood stuck to the wall there and a bit of an area where there's been some blood spilt. And the, the effect of uh, casting the blood is simple matter of, of mixing some black and red together and loading up a toothbrush, a used toothbrush, and then sort of flicking it and it'll it'll send flicks of uh, bits of paint um, on the floor tiles and against the wall and that makes for a nice effect. And so I've got little loops and, and uh, things around the arena, some flocking in the corner, some um, Woodland Scenics turf, grass, growing up out of some, some cracks, just some select spots around. Let's see, here's another loop there and there. Let me see if I can see this. There's another chain and loop hanging off the end there. And just some, some light flocking along the thicker portion of the wall. And 
against this pillar a little more a little more blood with a, a blood stained area of floor tile so this uh, this tile was used in in the game session that we held today and uh, the players seem to really like it uh, we actually having didn't make it as far as holding a combat inside the the chamber um, but that'll happen uh, next session I also made a, a gate uh, for the the room as well and this this came out okay it's supposed to be just rusty bars it's pretty dark looking um, I might do something else with it before I before I finish it and it was made with just some uh, scrap left over a bit of uh, flooring uh, if, if you've been watching my uh, Hearst Arts in video uh, you'll see that I've got flooring and I just drilled holes in two pieces in fact, you can see where I, I busted busted the end on, on that piece there, and um, wound up with only seven bars instead of eight. But yeah, I just drilled holes and uh, pushed these little uh, wooden dowels through. They're the woodcraft dowels, so I cut those in half and uh, pushed them through and and glued it up and painted it. So that's going to serve as a as a gate entrance way. So that's it. That's been a real fun exercise. A couple uh, evenings, or in fact, uh, a full day of, of crafting um, from um, last week, and then a couple, a couple evenings um, over this past week to put it together. But it's been a real fun exercise. Uh, thanks, and we'll see you again. Into this! <laughs> Into this! <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> Into this!